A nefarious nightmare contains themes that may be explicit or triggering for some. Specific warnings and disclaimers will be mentioned in the show notes. A nefarious nightmare assumes all parties that are mentioned in these cases to be innocent unless proven guilty in a court of law. Listener discretion is strongly advised. You can help us grow the show by leaving us a five-star written review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Or you can join our Patreon for lighthearted bonus content. I'm Courtney. And I'm Amanda. And this is a bonus episode for A Nefarious Nightmare. Before we get into it, I'll offer a content and trigger warning off the top. There will be discussions of sexual violence and narcissistic abuse. So if you find that to be triggering, please skip this episode, as well as any episode in either the Minding the Beehive or Still Minding the Beehive series. Okay, so now that that is out of the way, I just want to remind you all that Courtney and I are going to take a few weeks off before season six starts. We have really been hard at work trying to get on top of prioritizing our mental health, planning for future events, fine tuning some organization, cleaning up messes, and researching for plenty of episodes in the works, a few which will be updates on previous cases. Since we are on the topic of mental health, you may or may not have noticed Courtney's absence from social media the past few days. I've really been onto her about spreading herself too thin, and she finally took my advice. So not to worry, she's still alive, but she's healing and taking a much needed break. She does have all the FOMO, that's a fear of missing out for all you fellow millennials out there. So be sure to fill her in when she returns to Facebook or whatever social media exists by then, to be honest. She is currently watching old episodes of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. You know, it's it's her and I's guilty pleasure. We both love the Kardashians, but we don't really like to advertise that very much. But that's probably because it's drama-filled and we can watch somebody else's drama instead of our own dramas. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the phone. I like the Kardashians, okay? It's entertaining. It's like watching a diamond-encrusted train wreck just... You know what? I'm gonna I'm a go before Amanda smacks me because I'm supposed to be on a quote-unquote break. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get smacked or don't want to get us another negative review about how we aren't adept at speech and that we speak stilted. Whatever that means. Okay, bye. So not to worry, because you'll be hearing a lot from her in this episode as she and Haley chat for today's bonus episode. Who's Haley, you ask? Well, we invited Haley back to discuss what's been happening recently. As you all may remember, Haley told her story in part five of the original Mining the Beehive series. For more reference, you can navigate back to season two, episode 12. We invited her back because we felt she was an essential part of the most recent series. The one thing I would like to remind you all is that Haley initially was a sting operative, but then we find out that she was actually one of Adrian's victims. It was such a pleasure to have her back on, and we appreciate Haley for making time to chat with us. With that, I'm going to let Courtney take over from here. All right, so thank you very much, Haley for joining me tonight um just so everybody knows um Haley was on our original minding the beehive series back in season two and this was um a little over a year ago um but I really wanted to bring her back for this special bonus episode because she is very essential in the original case and has just been hugely amazing throughout this whole process as it were she's still um pretty much advocating and just being a good friend and support system for Holly and everybody else. So, um, yeah, I really wanted to include her and bring her on. So welcome back, Haley. How are you doing today? Thank you. So nice. Um, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm tired, man. Like, I'm sure that you're aware that we've had a lot happen in the past couple of weeks and, um, Mm -hmm you know i don't sleep so that's a fun thing that um i don't get to do um but yeah um so 
yeah, I'm going to kind of keep this pretty low key and chill um, because I'm, I know that the ones that have listened to the original series would want an update. Um, but I kind of want to ask you some questions about you. So I don't know, like, what are you watching on TV right now? <laughs> um, honestly, I don't really watch TV. I just watch YouTube. Okay. Um, and I specifically watch a podcast called H3 Podcast. I've heard of it. If you know anything about them, they make very, very long podcasts that are anywhere from like two to four hours long. So I just don't have time to watch anything but that. <laughs> no, I understand. Um, what do they talk about? Uh, anything and everything. I don't even know how to describe it. Like each day that they do it is kind of a little different uh, like vibe. They have a political podcast. They have like celebrity drama, internet drama, just things that are going on in general. It's like a whole crew of people. So it's more about oh. like them. That's kind of cool, actually. Like I might actually have to look into that. It's, it's kind of like a variety show in a way, right? Yeah, uh-huh, literally, yeah. uh-huh. That's cool. See, part of the reason why I asked you is because I've been so desperately wanting to admit to everybody that I've been watching the Kardashians. And I was just... <laughs> You know, deeply hoping that somebody else was going to be like, I'm watching the Kardashians and I was going to be like, OK, I don't feel like such an ass. Um, so that's the whole reason why I asked. That um, no, I've I've also been watching. Um, well, not recently, but Yellow Jackets. But I'm going to definitely oh, yeah. check out that H3 podcast. Um, sometimes I just need something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, the Kardashians that is that is a good one. <laughs> Okay, thank so you. Funny. You're making me feel a lot better. I have the <laughs> hugest, like, I was just telling you earlier that I have the hugest hetero crush on you, but I also have the hugest hetero crush on Chloe Kardashian. I, I just, <laughs> I can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And also, as, as much as I used to dislike Kourtney Kardashian, I'm kind of starting to understand where she's coming from. So I guess maybe okay. it's a, yeah, she, she's, she's, you know, she's there. Um, but I get why she is the way she is, and you know, that's that's yeah. all I'll say about that. <laughs> um, so, can you give everybody listening um, a brief recap on what had happened to you to prompt um, us to have an interview in the first place? Yeah. Um, so I was like sexually coerced by Adrian, um, and then after I found out about like uh, the other victims and Holly. Um, then I continued to talk to him, and uh, I was the one who recorded the phone call that you guys posted. Um, have you heard from him or any of his family members, you know, recently? No, no, uh -uh, no contact. <laughs> Good. I really wanted to ask, okay, so Tatum and I kind of brushed up on this a little bit, um, but it's hilarious, so you know I'm going to bring it up, but what's up with the salad? <laughs> we, we need to hear it from you because you made these like super funny graphics and i was just like wow we did like uh, a, we did like a campaign even for like the current <laughs> series and this this girl y'all she gets up and she takes this campaign and puts salad on there i was like fuck yeah <laughs> can you please explain the salad <laughs> uh yes yeah, so in the beginning of like all of us posting our awareness post about Adrian, um, his mother decided to make a fake Facebook page, um, and her profile picture was just a, a salad like on a table. And we, yeah, we just loved that image, obviously. <laughs> and we, it was just so clear that it was her so uh, she was making all these salad. comments, literally hiding behind salad. So. We had talked about it recently and I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot that she did that. That is the funniest thing ever. So then I decided to take the ugliest picture of me and put it in a corner of the salad picture that I, I just looked up Applebee's uh, salad. And I had it as my profile picture for like a month. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I remember that at first. I was like, what is this? And I was <laughs> like, there's, I just, it's an inside joke. I'm now yeah. kind of part of, so... Yes. <laughs> no one understood. I had my family members be like, why do you have why do you have a salad as your picture? And then I would have to explain it. <laughs> so you are a fellow Aquarius. So, you know, we run the show. We're the best. 
and we do things like post salad because why the fuck not like you <laughs> you shouldn't be online trolling people and hiding behind salad you just don't do that yeah. so if you do then people like us are going to troll you hiding behind salad absolutely it's hilarious how why yeah. wouldn't i do that why wouldn't right. i <laughs> dude you should have like named each and every one like you had the cheese you had like the lettuce you had the crouton you like named them like you know adrian and steven and <laughs> victoria <laughs> just tag them yeah <laughs> this is you this is you um so yeah um can you also we were talking about um earlier this is unfortunate um about that invest you had an investigator after we did your episode and she decided tell me if i'm wrong she decided to quit working with you because you did a podcast episode is that i mean that? yeah essentially yes um i actually re i reread the the last email that she sent me because i had just i hadn't heard anything uh any updates nothing about the case uh, yeah. ever since like i first reported it mm -hmm. um i got an initial email from her and then i sent her some things that she asked for and then i just never heard from her again so when adrian was first arrested um i just let her know that you know he was arrested and he also still has you know other cases and whatever going on and um she kind of de like gave me a little more detail because I asked, okay, if my case, because she told me my case was closed mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, well, like, can I get some more information? Because no one let me know that. Like, I had no idea that my case was closed. Um, and then she said that she had her, like, I don't even know what it's called, like some other type of detective um, contact, um, Holly's detective and Kitty's detective and they did some like research or whatever and she basically said um we saw the episodes of these podcasts of other victims um and unfortunately like that could be looked at as um ugh, i can't remember the word hold on let me look it up i'm literally gonna read what she said obstruction of justice or impeding on a case let me see it's right here. uh it, it could be considered collusion by oh. a defense attorney um, mm -hmm. because uh, since recollection and memories were compared with other victims, that would be considered collusion, apparently. Okay, so I guess I understand, you know, where she's coming from on that. However, that shouldn't stop somebody from trying to investigate. Am I wrong? Like, no. I mean... Absolutely not. Not to Especially mention... Especially with that many victims and that many people. Like, you think that all these random people from all these different states throughout the country right. just randomly came across this and they're like you know what yeah i'm gonna join in on this absolutely i had a terrible experience with him too he <laughs> he like no yeah, one's doing that yeah it's, this is totally not like a a serial rapist victim cult or anything like that like that's y'all none of y'all knew each other prior to any of this and and we've said that and we've no. also said it's just different how like they're all describing the same person and didn't know each other from adam prior to this i mean there's no way you can get how many women now 60 together to like tell the same story like that's just not possible and another Absolutely. thing that bothers me about like like again i want to say i understand where she's coming from about the collusion but if an investigator calls me literally emails me two days after that season ended and says your podcast has been instrumental then why would you stop invest uh, that just makes no sense to me i'm sorry uh -huh. i think i think that that investigator in texas well we just say bless her heart um <laughs> she absolutely um failed you like that's i'm so sorry that happened to you um thanks i mean what can you do about it now it would have been great uh, well, to have any other outcome other than this but hey what can I mean, you do <laughs> well hopefully she hears this episode and really? you know maybe somebody will audit her i don't know <laughs> um so tell me so based off of what i myself and tatum have talked to you about because i know you haven't had a chance to listen to the current series which i understand because th these are heavy cases and not everybody has the emotional bandwidth to be able to handle that and 
I completely like right now I'm trying to run far away from it myself <laughs> I got death threats guys um yeah. but yeah it's just too much sometimes but um I do want to ask you um first of all have you ever heard of sextortion prior to any of this no uh-uh. <laughs> this was the first time I had heard about any of that okay but you have heard of revenge porn right yes uh-huh. okay and you do know that there's a difference between the two right because not everybody knows that there's a difference um I it's think okay so. i don't mean to put you on the spot no just... well i mean my guess or what i'm what i think i know yeah um at least like with revenge porn <clears throat> excuse me with revenge porn um like that's something that they sent to them right. like sent to another person um, and then they, without their consent, have like distributed it. Right. But I think with the sextortion stuff, like, do they even? I don't even think they know. Like, people are just stealing people's so, pictures. Right. Yeah. So, um, revenge porn is basically like you pissed off your ex boyfriend. He wants to get you back. So, those nudes or that sex tape that you, basically Kim Kardashian. Speaking of that, right. um, you know, honestly, he was kind of a victim of revenge porn. If I if I recall correctly. There was the most hated man on the internet. He was all about the revenge porn. I would say revenge porn is, you know, low carb sextortion. Um, and I don't mean that to be funny. That's just the best way I can describe it. Yeah. Sextortion <laughs> is basically like you are literally extorting women online. Um, pretty much right up there with trafficking, except it's digitally. Um, we, myself and Amanda constantly say that it is digital sexual assault. You are taking photos with or without somebody's knowledge, such as either they have photos in their phone that only they have access to, but you suddenly have that access to it as well. So you're stealing or you've signed up for some kind of like membership on OnlyFans and have mm -hmm. distributed without their consent. And then you are blackmailing these victims by saying that you will take it down unless they, or you, they won't take it down unless you either pay them or you give them images of somebody else. So it's one of those things that it's it's a serious crime that is not being taken seriously by certain senators um, over in the area that we discussed. Mm -hmm. Even though they have um, made a law criminalizing it to the fullest extent, they are ignoring these women. Um, and the thing about sextortion is you could literally be innocent and i'm not trying to say this to scare anybody but you could literally have taken an accidental photo of yourself brushing your hair right this actually happened to one of the victims brushing her hair looking in the mirror she was getting ready to go to work and her friend took a picture of her topless and it fell into the wrong hands and they're blackmailing her with it um this extortionist has gone as far as deep faking minors as young as two years old into sexual images for distribution online. So I don't even understand. Yeah. How do you, how do you get into that? How, what? So the perpetrator that we believe, and I'm not about to say his name on here yet, but like the perpetrator we believe is somebody who was arrested with priors for um, pleasuring himself in front of minors. Um, a few times they finally had deported him um, we don't know for 100% fact but we do know with a 99.99% .99 fact and it's somebody that um, they the victims that we spoke with has been saying from day one but we just needed that proof you know yeah with all that though that's the thing about sextortion and that's the reason why I wanted to ask is because Unfortunately, not very many people are aware of it or they're not aware of the difference between that and, you know, revenge porn. And it's mm -hmm. serious. And basically, I hate to say it, but we all could be put under in, like in jeopardy of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm really trying to raise as much awareness about it as, as possible because, you know, you, you never know who it could be. And that person is relentless and he will continue doing it until he's put behind bars and it's just sick so but yeah that's i didn't mean to go into all that but like no i, I guess i just I wanted to ask that. yeah it's insane right um but i just wanted to ask you i was basically saying based off of what we have told you um mm -hmm. you know as far as like the entire series 
which started with the sextortion. It was phase one. You know, what did you think? Do you think that um, there could have been a way that the senator, for example, should have listened and taken it seriously? Or do you think there's anything that you, as somebody that survived Adrian Vildusea, might think that we could, you know, add in going forward if we were to do another series? Or really, generally, what did you think of the series? Even though you haven't heard it, you've heard of it. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. I mean, it's obviously insane that's all i can really say about it is i don't understand why anyone won't why anyone would want to do that in the in the first place or where you get the idea to do that and yeah i had never heard about any other like stories or anything or um i haven't known anyone that had any of that um sextortion like things happen to them Mm -hmm. um so i yeah i mean awareness a number one is a big thing and yeah teaching people what it is and i do like how you've already you know tried to make that distinction of how different this is and i think it's i mean it it sounds like it's a more like a newer thing to be happening um and with all of our like technology getting nuts nowadays i can't oh oh my god it's scary it really is it is Um, terrifying (laughs) and it, it is ridiculous that people don't take any of this kind of stuff seriously i mean mm-hmm. it's very clear that it's, there aren't any um cops detectives senators anyone mm-hmm. who gives a fuck about these things that women are going through and they just love to minimize it and ignore it and just be like well, well it's obviously not that big of a deal so let's go i don't know attack this random person down the street instead or let's right. not protect the school that's getting shoot up instead like exactly they're wasting I don't know what they're wasting their time and resources on, but they need to listen to people because Mm -hmm. these stories, especially with sexual assault, and there are so many like big celebrity stories that are coming out and it's like, I don't know. Yeah, we're finding out about, um, what's his name from that 70s show? Mm -hmm. We're finding out about that one that's not shocking to me, about Russell Brand. Um, Yeah. Uh I mean, all of these people are coming out of the woodwork and it's a lot of it is because these uh women were afraid to report simple yes they were afraid to report or they felt like if they reported it wouldn't be taken seriously because the truth of the matter is it's not it's just yes. under the rug um our lawmakers our law enforcement they they don't take it seriously they think oh well they'll be okay in a couple of years no they're dealing with like ptsd they're dealing with trauma they're yes. dealing with mental health and depression and body dysmorphia all this kind of stuff and absolutely <laughs> Um, with sextortion, I mean, I mean, anybody could be a victim of it. And it just... It, and that's still was... insanely violating. Yeah. Like, do they not understand that? Like, that, right. I can't even imagine. Right. That would make me feel so incredibly unsafe. Like, Yeah. It's... it's it, Oh my gosh, it's terrifying, like, what these people can do. Now, the one that we're dealing with, and I'm not afraid to say it, he's not that smart. But... Um, there are good, there are least. cases I've been trying to talk to the FBI we have contacted Interpol we have contact because the person has been deported we have contacted mm-hmm. so many people we've contacted Senator Lynn Waltz who has ignored and not commented on anything we've said we have been applying so much pressure um, it's really profound to me that a senator in Fremont where this is happening who had created a law to fully penalize somebody for this is straight up ignoring 20 or more women. But in the meantime, Kay Granger was willing to listen to me and Kay Granger is in Texas. How fucked up is that? (laughs) That's saying a lot. Does that, I mean, (laughs) and I'm not saying, Uh. I'm not saying that all law enforcement are bad, not by a long shot. What I am saying is that it is their duty to protect and serve, whether they are the FBI, whether they are police officers, whatever. And part of protecting and serving is doing your job and taking women seriously when they are complaining and reporting about sextortion. And especially Mm -hmm. when you've got civilians busting their ass and saying, oh, I've got all the evidence. 
you don't have to do anything. Here's the evidence. Just go get the guy. And they're like, Literally. no, I'll wait till I have a slow day. And they That's never what's do. insane to me. Yeah. Like they will only do something if you do all the work for them. And they and still want some nothing really. In- yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I don't know, they'll always find some excuse. It is insane. That is all we've seen. It's right. just disappointment after disappointment after di- disappointment. It is absolutely, in- that's all I can keep saying. It is insane. I there, can't believe it. There is a significant amount of people who have been vig- victimized by sextortion, who end up unaliving themselves. Um, the one case that has always stuck with me was the case of Amanda Todd, where she was 16 years old um, and was a victim of i would say it was a mixture of revenge porn and sextortion but nonetheless it was sextortion because she was a minor and um she was victimized for three years and at the age of 16 she unalived herself her perpetrator Aiden koban was not caught and apprehended for 10 years that 16 year old old girl did not live to see justice there is a case here in texas where somebody had unalived himself because he was a victim of sextortion what is it going to take for these people to take these men and women seriously you know that is insane 10 years 10 years until they finally caught and apprehended Aiden Coban that must have been agonizing for that family yeah Carol Todd is I mean she's obviously got a little peace now but they didn't even if I remember correctly, they didn't even fully um, punish him. Like they gave him, I want to say maybe five or 10 years or something. <laughs> Despite the fact that this 16 year old unalived herself because she was going through it because she was victimized by a full grown man extorting her photos online. But these people, Lynn Waltz, for example, want to just ignore these women's cries for help. I just don't get it. But sorry, I did not mean to get all passionate about that, but it's just, no. it's a real problem. It's a real problem. And, um, yeah. And obviously this person really wants to get away with it because he's going to continue sending harassing emails to people. He's going to continue harassing these women. He's now sending death threats and it's just like, cool, cool, cool. Are you going to get on a plane and fly all the way across like the Pacific and come get me? I mean because because i'm calling you out for exposing women and children like yeah you should have thought about that before hello yeah, yeah. so what the hell? yeah it's fucking crazy right so i don't understand i really i wish that i don't know there was like because you know what's crazy in the hair industry like you have to continue to take classes you have to continue to get educated yeah. in hair right this is hair mm-hmm. why wouldn't like law enforcement or whoever the hell else why wouldn't they have continual education on different things right i mean i think especially with like with the email about us uh, whatever colluding is that what it was yeah like for myself i know we talked about on on my episode um last year that i didn't realize that i was a victim i knew that what i went through was really weird and really awful and it made me feel so incredibly uncomfortable and it has caused me uh, a lot of pain and suffering throughout this time but i had no idea in the beginning that it was uh like sexual assault and because i was never educated on on consent on the specific specifics of these things and even now like so at my job, I work with a bunch of younger men and mm-hmm. they listen to Joe Rogan and different podcasts that are similar to that. And this morning, I literally, I came home from work early today because I couldn't stop shaking and crying because of what this podcast was talking about. Yeah. And it's been over a year since what happened to me happened to me. And it, I feel like I've mentioned this a million times like my incident wasn't even the worst of it like it wasn't that terrible but it has still affected me this much and it's still a year and some change later still affecting me and this podcast was actually talking about Russell Brand and all his stuff yeah and they just talk about it so lightly and just laugh and joke and whatever and it's like no one 
fucking cares about it's these not, women. It's not funny. No one fucking cares. Right. And I just sat like I was just devastated hearing all of this stuff. And that's how so many people think about it. And they don't they don't learn what consent is. They don't learn about all these different things that could be happening and could be very negatively affecting women and their lives. And they just joke about it because they have no idea what's going on. They're not going through it. I mean, as if I'm not saying, obviously, of course, men go through right. sexual assault too. But, but statistically, let's be it's more women, yes. right? In general, let's, you know, so yeah. it's just, it's really disheartening. And I wish that people would just stop thinking that it's just a little like, okay, get over it. Okay, no. whatever. It was just like, everyone goes through that, whatever. Okay, that wasn't actually sexual assault. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's so tiring. And hearing all of these cases and, and um, you know, all the celebrities that have been in the news and stuff lately, it's just so tiring to hear all of these dumb opinions. Like, I'm sorry, they're dumb as fuck. You guys are dumb as fuck right. if you think that it's a joke, if you think that these women are just lying and pulling these stories out of their asses. Like, I've heard, seen so many people post about the, um, What's his name from that 70s show? Whatever uh, his name is. Um, just like, you know, we all know how hard it is to get someone convicted of rape. Yes. And for him to be convicted for 30 fucking years. Yeah. Like, and they're still just joking about it. And like, mm, well, probably wasn't true. It's wild. It's, and it's not fair. Um, I mean, I am very, very glad that he's finally seeing his um, retribution for everything that he has done but it's it's almost like it's too little too late like if they had just listened and saw all the signs and and were a lot more aware when it all started happening um mm -hmm. to these women and took them seriously in the first place like this yes this could have been lock and key a long time ago but mm -hmm. i don't understand why people want to drag this kind of shit out it's not something that should be dragged out it's 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 ruining lives and they're like, well, it takes time. We understand that the process takes time, but when you're sitting on your ass eating a donut, not doing fucking shit until somebody's like, oh, well, the blood's on your hands now, and then they do something, <laughs> it's not a good look. I mean, not I'm sorry. All. So uh, I, uh, I'm i very glad that we share in the same kind of passion about this because I'm beginning to think that I'm going crazy, but I, yeah. I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm really tired of seeing people who are human that are that have beating hearts and emotions and feelings just being thrown to the wayside you know and yeah. i get it like i just realized like over just over a year ago that when i was in my situation i was sexually assaulted i didn't know that that's what had happened to me until mm -hmm. i really thought about it and i was like holy shit i was raped right um, but my situation is also not as serious as some others, and it's more serious than some others. And it's not a pissing mm -hmm. contest. It's the For fact sure. that we all are humans with beating hearts and emotions and feelings and passions and things that we want to do when we grow up and things that we want to teach our children, um, whether we've been in sex work or not, whether we've been in a cult or not, whether we have been victimized by Adrian DeVille to say or not, it doesn't matter. Treat us mm -hmm. like human beings, you know? Absolutely um oh look at us i this is supposed to be a light-hearted fun um <laughs> so do you have any goals pertaining to advocacy um and if so do you like what efforts do you think that everybody should employ to persuade things like law enforcement and anybody else in the higher up to take those of us with big voices serious mm -hmm. i mean i think the more the people talk about it the better of course um mm -hmm just having more open conversations about it because honestly i mean i see how hard everyone works to try to get something actually like set in stone uh like law wise or whatever the hell and it just not to say that it's not worth it because obviously it is sometimes but it's very fucking tiring yeah and a ton of disappointment after disappointment and I know that I, I mean, I can't change anything. The most that I can do is do what I've been doing, like mm -hmm. talking openly about what happened and having these conversations, 
And if I hear people having these conversations and it's like, okay, tons of misinformation that now I'm comfortable as a person to go up and actually say something and like, you know, intervene myself. But as far as me, like contacting my local whoever, I mean, I just don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't blame I you. Like, even, that, even if we've got I don't a lot of the energy. Right. Even if we have to like liaise somebody to do it for us, like, right. fine, just do it. <laughs> right. I completely get but, it. Yeah. The most I can do is just keep spreading awareness yes. as I do, you know? And you do an amazing job at it. I'm always watching. I know that sounded really creepy, but I'm always watching. I'm always I can, watching you. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> Beginning to look out. What was that one thing? Something feels sketchy or whatever. You were like in the in the stairs and oh, um oh my god why can't i think of it oh i'm kind of sketched out yeah I'm kind of sketched out right. <laughs> you know damn well everybody's gonna laugh at that one if they if they know what we're talking about um i don't know if i should give that inside joke away but that's okay or maybe i should i don't know um so do you have anything that you'd like for listeners to know and um any advice that you'd like to give um i mean for anyone who has you know, dealt with shit law enforcement and, you know, was scared to report and did and ended up being awful. Just know that I'm there with you. And I mean, I don't want to discourage people from reporting and from doing these things because it is so important. And it it's not for, you know, the faint of heart. I mean, it, just seeing, you know, the other women involved and what they've had to do with their cases it is so, it is just so tiring. I commend them every day for sticking to it and working so fucking hard on their own yeah. to get all of these things done because the people that are supposed to be there for them are not. And <clears throat> I mean, I just hope that people's, you know, view of reporting and like victim blaming and like, why didn't she say anything earlier? Why didn't she go report? It's right. like, look around, look at all of us women who are or complaining and and crying for help for anybody to get yeah. this man off the streets and yeah. no one listens right like like the said, more what people the do fuck this is and the it more... gonna take you know honestly it is just astounding and i am so incredibly sorry for anybody that had to go through anything like that and i love you and i am i am with you like i am just it is it is so incredibly hard it is that's all i can say it is so incredibly hard you're just mentally exhausted all the time from all these things and it's crazy it's insane you are amazing um you are no you <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna fight on air no kidding um do you have any um, messages to any perpetrators you want to tell somebody to go fuck themselves <clears throat> Oh yeah, absolutely. Go for it. I'm sure, I'm sure Mr. Papa Snags is listening because why wouldn't he be <laughs> loves hearing about himself? Um Yeah, go ahead and educate so yourself, that... Adrian. <laughs> Literally. I tried to. I sent him my last text peck oh my god, peck my friend peck. my <laughs> last text messages to him. Um were like pictures of uh like what consent is what consent right. is what consent isn't mm -hmm. i did my part on trying to educate him um oh, but yeah just know that yeah we're we're gonna forever work hard to make sure you end up where you belong yeah. and you can keep on lying and keep on saying all these little things and make up all your little lies and keep making your little facebook salad pictures um <laughs> But we're doing our very best to make sure that you end up in jail where you yeah. belong. Away from women, away from society, psychopath. Just, uh, I can't wait for that day because it will come. Oh, it's going to come. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Haley, thank you so much. Um, and I am so grateful that you came and talked to me today. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Genuinely. I no, say you. it every time and I am so grateful that we came in contact. I just, I love your guys' work and you are clearly so incredibly passionate in helping 
in helping these victims and it's like amazing it really is you have so much love and it's like the mom love the mom love you know what i mean like it, i love I am it. a you're, mom you're such a you are a wonderful human and i am just so glad that i know you i'm glad i really I know am. you seriously <laughs> please always remember bees are strong resilient yet vulnerable we must protect the bees at all costs for without bees we as a human race cannot survive or thrive so be vigilant for when you mess with the bees you get the hive Thank you for listening to A Nefarious Nightmare. Music used in the theme was originally by Ghost Stories Incorporated. Remixed by Ryan RCX Murphy. Additional background music is provided by Epidemic Sound. A Nefarious Nightmare is scripted, researched, and produced by Courtney Fenner and Amanda Cronin. I'm Lainey Hobbs. And as always, be vigilant. For when you mess with the bees, you get the hive. <laughs>